And now we are joined by WHL Commissioner Dan Neer. And Dan, we were saying we've been at the Memorial Cup. We've crossed paths, but we've never actually met before. So glad you could join us here today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. TSN does, TSN does a fantastic job with this event. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, I know you took over officially in February, and I was reading a, an interview that you gave in Saginaw at the Memorial Cup, and you said the first couple of months were overwhelming. Are they still overwhelming a couple of months after that now? Yeah, it's still overwhelming. I don't anticipate that to subside anytime soon, but I'm starting to figure out a little bit how it works and a little bit what drives everybody, what motivates everybody, and how I can start to make an impact, which is really what I'm excited to do. The Western Hockey League is such a fantastic historical hockey league, right. and I think that we can keep growing and keep being better. Now, Ron Robinson hold the, held the post for 23 years, so you're the first commissioner since the year 2000, since the turn of the century. <clears throat> did you ask him for any advice? Is he being around to bounce ideas off of it all? Not only did I ask him for advice, but I still ask him for advice. Ron stayed on as an advisor, and we talk a couple of times a week. He helps me through some of the tough situations, and we don't agree on every single thing, but it's been fun to have his wisdom, his advice, and his counsel as we've gone along here. Dan, I, I, we're watching this game, we're watching the U.S. You've got two players playing on the U.S. who play in the CHL. One plays right here uh, with Blake Fiddler, plays in Edmonton. How are talks going with the NCAA and the CHL? I was general manager of the Peets back in 2010, and it was a big thing about the education with the players and the American players and the Canadian guys wanting to go up and back and forth. How are things progressing with the NCAA and the CHL? It's an evolving landscape, and it's complicated. I think one thing is the CHL, the WHL, we're like a 16 to 19, 16 to 20 year old league. And NCAA is where you play from 20 to 23, 20 to 24. And the idea that you can't do both right now is a fascinating thing. You're making a decision very, very early on. And the NCAA is an environment right now where players are getting paid to play uh, basketball, players are, are getting paid to pay football. And the idea that, uh, you know, the professional status that makes a major junior player ineligible is a really tricky and complicated situation. I'm not sure it's best for player development. It's, it's interesting because it's always been an issue about where players are going to go to school afterwards. The WHL and the CHL have got a tremendous education program for all of their players. How is that going, the WHL? Well, we funded over $3 million in, in academic scholarships this year for WHL alumni alone. And you think about Ontario and Quebec on top of that. Every time, you, any year you play in our league, one game, you get a full year academic ride to the college of your choice. It can be a Canadian school, it can be an American school. And we're very, very proud of that. And our owners invest in it, and it's a priority for us. As we talk to parents, and we try and imagine, what's this opportunity to play major junior hockey in the Western Hockey League? 100% high school graduation rate, everyone's got an education advisor, and the vast majority of players that don't want to play professional hockey are using our scholarship to fuel their education moving forward. Well, really quickly before we let you go, I wanted to talk to you about Landon DuPont, who's the next exceptional status player here in the league, just 15 years old, the first defenseman. Do you have any added pressure to kind of shield him and protect him from the pressure that's going to come and the attention as well? We talked about this when Landon was announced as an exceptional player, that he's a 15-year-old. 15! <laughs> who's a high school kid, who has friends, who's not just a hockey player. Hockey is an important part of his life, and certainly as his profile grows, it's going to be complicated for him. But but I imagine he's going to follow in the footsteps of young men like Connor Bedard, who have done a fantastic job at balancing being a great citizen, being a great high school kid and teammate and buddy, but developing as a hockey player and representing the Western Hockey League at the highest level. To imagine that Connor Bedard played just two years ago as Regina Pat and is tearing it up in the NHL just shows the caliber of hockey in our league. And then we'll be watching another WHL superstar, uh, Gavin McKenna, in that gold medal game later today against Czechia. Well, Dan, we appreciate you joining us. Enjoy the rest of your time here in Edmonton.